Mogisalme <laughs> Adam in Suplebata Shesahe Plexit, Romos at Gautuba Calbat on Maria Bergeri, Calbat on Maria Bergeri Aris Mosamartle, Europe is Smart Zulebisa Samartlusi, Dara Adam in Suplebata Europolisa Samartlusi, Twentwis Sakatolos to his Amsa Samartlus, Gadatuet Ilebebi. Albert Naklebat არის ცნობილი შედარებით გასაგები მიზეზების გამო, რადგანაც საქართველო არ არის ჯერ იმედი ვიქონიათ რომ მომავალში გახდებით წევრი ევროპის კავშირისა, თუმცა ამის მიუხედავად ამ სასამართლოს განმარტებები და გადაწყვეტილებები ჩვენთვის როგორც ასოცირების შეთანხმების ხელმომწერი ქვეყნისათვის არის ძალიან მნიშვნელოვანი. Amitom didi imedi maksrom am sistema shi uket karkovis shedegat trends shouzlept rom shirat kamu argumentatsi istros mainz kamu vikenot kholme is kadats koti lebebi sadats mnishnoen gan marta bebi gaketa am sasa martlom kalbaton Maria Bergeri esegi English surat kaudzhoba lekcias didi imedi maksrom ist kuntuis araris. Tap Colebas are shakenis. As seven in the Gitrat from Shemde Gisajaro lexia Romel Satsa, the means of Lebata Institute, the Gauts organize Basic Neba Sakatol Rusetis Omis at its list out and Taka Shirebuli lexia, the means of Lebata that Swiss Saheb. Romelitz Savaro do Totmet a November Sky Marteba that Kidomogatu Tam lexia Saheb. Informatias, Madluba, Minda Gadauha, the trans partner reps, Erdot Europe is Kaushirs, the Matmir Dapnesabu projects, U for Justice. Radganats, Matimots of it in Opeba, Calbaton Maria Sakartoloshi, Calbaton Maria Sminda Madluba Gadauha, Radgans, is Sakartoloshi, Aris Chamosuli, Trenimo Samartlebis training is twist, the Italian Madli Rebiwatrom, Gamuzebna Dro, Romshek Hedrodat, Quens, Cartol student Epsats, the Esaubra, the main suplebata. Shesaheb, Didi Madluba, the Imedimaxrom, Sainteresso Iknebat, Quentuis Lexia. Ahlal, sit was got out some lali chetias, lali shemlia moxet. Mogesal mebit at Armogit Gabit, Megahlor, Lali chetia, Chem student of Shed out, Auditoria Shimogesal mebit, Quentrat Mounta, did the Madloba Quellas from Hart Am Sajor Alexis Monat Ilebi, Cheni Projecti. Eurocausiris project, Yari Sasamarthos, some Hardacheris project, Yano Sasamarthos system is institute organ with Hareba Sam Sahureba. Da Ertirti Sak it hit, his restriction cast twenty project is in a shape, stored the Eurocausiris, Samartlis popularizatia. Irol Rikshimo Samartlab Shoris, Tumta, Samartli student apps, head out Rogers Momol Practicoseps. Most of the labs are doctors. Um, so the system is not much of a useful step. The academic dinner of Twitterum started when when Ganunda died. Was as a neurocausal is some of this popularization. Um, twenty is did it from Luxembourg. Is some of those most of the labs to Europe's. Um, Taiwan's colleague Tanek Nebashe had a moment when some or it risk and no Obashi. Um, my grandmother colleague Tanek she had risk as a little bit. Konda didi medi guaxroma mo shit squek ne ba shesta zlebla baro me rok avshiri samar thaze praktik oseptan dara mar to praktik oseptan kondes met ishe khodra mit amram chweni jurisdiktsi is praktik osebistu is estalian a khali siurtsia khali sam karua romelits 
Zalian Beuris Momcemia practicos juristis, tu es mi hija de Odimis, a quien Moguit Estuaram, Samartlis, Norme Bisada, Presidente Uli Samartlis, practica Shigamo, Eneba, Saval de Bulo, Rogot Saval de Bulo, Zalis Mkonesi, Nebis Mirshem, Toshi, Gansakut Rabit Comparativist Uli, Midgome Bis, Argat Kassad Snobat, da practica Shigamo Sakaneblat, Zalian Mishnovanianom, Samartlis es Sirce, Ostrantan, Achlos Mdgomi. Aquí de verdad que ni madloba, nada que me onda, además se puede ver que en institutos más bien se lobis tuista, y me digo que los cuatro me pides activar, y tengo un show me pide, se ha hecho con este web, está ok, como out, cabotón María se te jauro, mago martot. I just summarize briefly about our project and about this wonderful opportunity that you are here. I have to get used to it. Okay, it works? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the nice intro introduction and f I'm very really pleased to be here at the Georgian University. Uh, it, I think it was mentioned that uh, I'm a uh, judge at the European Court of Justice me in the meantime since uh, a little bit more than nine, nine years, but uh, I'm also a professor at the Viennese University and uh, the first I could see here that uh, this lecture room is uh, much more modern <laughs> than, than the ones we have at the law faculty uh, in Vienna and also the technical equipment uh, has a higher standard uh, as, as the one we, we use uh, at the University um, of, of uh, Vienna. Uh, I will give this presentation in English, I must say that uh, in the meantime, because the working language at the European Court of Justice is French. Yeah? And French, I never believed this, this but uh, French is in the meantime my first uh, foreign language. German, of course, is my uh, uh, basic language, but uh, for me it's, it's quite unusual to, to, to use English uh, again. Well, I'll try my best. Um, as you have heard, I will, I will uh, assist in a, in a seminar for, for uh, members of, of the Supreme Courts uh, here in, in, in Georgia. Uh, and one of uh, the issues at the seminar will also be the human rights issue uh, in, in the European uh, Union. So the idea was that I uh, also present here uh, some aspects of the situation with the human rights uh, uh, in the legal system of the uh, European Union. It's difficult to believe, but it's, uh, it's a human rights issue on the level of the European Union is quite a new issue because our original treaties, the founding treaties from the 50s, uh, they did not contain any human rights. At this time, uh, we had the convention, the Strasbourg Convention, the Convention on, on uh, Human Rights for Civil uh, and Criminal Law, and uh, within the then founding member <laughs> states of the European Union, which were only six at this time, yeah, uh, it was, it was the general attitude that uh, no human rights uh, provisions are necessary for the founding treaties uh, of the European Union. Later on, the European Court of Justice uh, 
recognize nevertheless that their human rights are to be respected uh, when uh, European Union law, or at this time European commun community law, uh, is to be interpreted and is to be uh, applied. This was for the first time in this famous judgment Stauder from the, in, 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 in 69. Then with the Maastricht Treaty, you know that uh, European primary law consists of treaties, the founding treaties, and then treating, amending more or less the founding treaties or replacing them finally. Uh, and we had in, in 1993 the Maastricht Treaty that uh, 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 came in force. And in the Maastricht Treaty we had for the first time a general reference uh, to human rights and to the European Convention on Human Rights. And then uh, during um, the, the later years, in the 90s, there was some kind of political discussion in the European Union going on. And um, one found that the European Union is too much on the economic side and that uh, values do not count enough. And uh, that the European Union, or this time still also the European community, communities uh, should uh, do a little bit more for human rights uh, and that uh, they should lean a little bit less to only economic uh, uh, questions. So in, in, um, there was a, some kind of convention set up uh, and um, they wrote a charter of fundamental, fundamental rights the, the authors of this charter were parliamentarians coming from the European Parliament and also from the national parliament. They were in the majority, but of course there were also representatives of the governments of the member states who were members of the Union at, at uh, that uh, time. But uh, the, in 2000, uh, this charter was proclaimed, but it was non-binding at this time and it took still a lot of time until this charter became an in, uh, in, uh, binding uh, instrument. So, this one. Okay. No, that was one too much. Okay. Then in 2009, the so-called Lisbon Treaty uh, came into force, and uh, this Lisbon Treaty uh, contains uh, the Article 6, which is certainly one of the, uh, the or the this Lisbon Treaty introduced an Article 6 to the Treaty on the, of the European Union. And uh, this is, in the meantime, certainly one of the most important articles in the primary law of the European uh, Union. And uh, the basic, uh, there are three basic uh, um, uh, issues in this uh, article, article 6. The one is that uh, the Union recognizes the rights, freedoms, and sorry, typing error principles set out uh, in the Charter, and this was very important, which shall have the same legal values as the treaties. That means from the entry into force of the Lisbon Treaty, the Charter became binding, and not only binding like a secondary legislation instrument, this Charter became part of the primary law, or what we call it the constitutional law of the European Union, and is at the same level, meaning the highest level on, in the hierarchy of Union uh, law um, rules. Then we have a, a second, uh, the idea that uh, the European Union shall exceed uh, to the con convention. I will uh, come back to this uh, later on and uh, fundamental rights as guaranteed by the Convention and as the result from the constitutional traditions coming to the Member States shall constitute general principles of the Union law. That means we have now three sources for human rights. Yeah? First, we have the Charter. Second, once the Union exceeded to the European Convention, the European uh, Convention will be uh, more or less um, uh, an external instrument which uh, is above all European Union uh, legislation, but first accession is, is, has to be done. And thirdly, we still have the possibility for our court to develop further fundamental rights if these rights result from common traditions uh, of the member states uh, or from uh, the 
from the, from the from the convention. That means the charter is not the only instrument. Yeah? Uh, uh, for the time being, of course, we find more or less a solution for all the cases uh, now in the Charter, but it's not excluded for the future that the court can develop further fundamental rights if, this, if the need is given. Okay, then uh, first to this ex aspect of, of, of the accession to the, to the uh, Convention. I mentioned already that this accession is foreseen or provided for in the Article 6 uh, um, of the Treaty on the European Union, but uh, the member states at the same time with the Article 6, they, they adopted also the protocol number 8, and this is the protocol which uh, is another reason for uh, more, many problems. And because in this protocol 8 they said, such accession shall not affect the union's competences and shall not alter the main features of its legal order. It's, um, uh, so to say, one should exceed, but nothing should change. Yeah? That's a little bit the idea. Yeah? And this is probably not possible. And, and this was the reason that this one draft accession agreement was, was negotiated between the European Union and uh, the signatories to the European Convention, and which was brought before our court for an uh, opinion that uh, we found that in this opinion that uh, uh, the ideas and the uh, solutions found uh, in this uh, ex draft accession agreement uh, are not in conformity with the protocol 8 because this protocol 8 uh, requires that uh, uh, nothing should change more or less yeah, in, in the European Union and that's not possible. Either you exceed to the European Convention and then there might be changes also to the legal system of the European Union or, or you don't exceed. So in my view, there are many other views, but in my view, the only uh, way out is that uh, this protocol number eight is abolished simply and we, we can exceed without this uh, kind of re reserves. Uh, so the, the status quo is that until now there is no accession uh, of the Union to the, uh, to the Convention and uh, probably this will be the status also in the near in the near future. Okay, then we'll come back to the, the Charter of, of uh, Fundamental Rights. I did not uh, listen here all, all the individual uh, rights, but only the chapters uh, which are uh, uh, in, the, in, in the Charter, and the, the first rights are under the heading of, of dignity, then the Charter goes on with the freedom rights, then the rights in the sector of uh, equality and solidarity, then to the citizens' rights and to rights uh, specifically to the justice uh, or the judicial uh, si systems. And then what's very important in particular for the work at our court, that uh, there are a lot of general provisions governing the interpretation and the application of the charter, something what's quite different from the convention which does not contain that many general um, provisions. Okay, let's start with the, the field of application of, the, uh, uh, of our uh, charter. I use two forms of abbreviations, yeah? CFR, Charter of Fundamental Rights, or simply the, the charter, it's always the same. We have, as regards the field of application, we have two very important uh, uh, provisions which have been subject already to a lot of judgments uh, by our court. The one says in Article 41.1 that uh, the Charter has to be applied by the institutions, bodies, offices and agencies of the Union with due regard to the principles. So there is no restriction whenever European unis, unions, uh, bodies, institutions, offices, agencies are acting, even when they are acting outside of the treaties, yeah? uh, then they are bound by the, uh, by, the, by the Charter. And this acting outside of the treaties is already addressed in this one judgment uh, cited here in, 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 in brackets. It's different for the member states of the European Union and it has to be different for the member states of the European Union 
because the member states of the European Union have most of them in their national constitutions a catalog of human rights or they are all signatories to the European Convention and having, so to say, this obligation to respect uh, the European uh, Convention. So it was not necessary to oblige uh, the member states of the European Union uh, to obey to the Charter in each situation. So we have here a restriction which says that the member states only have to apply the Charter when they are implementing Union law. So once Union law is to be applied, if member states are transposing secondary legislation of the European Union, then they also have to apply uh, the Charter. So what does it mean when that uh, implementing uh, uh, the this description of the, the scope of the Charter? So one of the basic um, uh, uh, rules that is applied by the, the court is that whenever national legislation falls within the scope of European Union law, situations cannot exist which are covered in that way by European law without those fundamental rights being applicable. The applicability of EU law entails the applicability of the Charter, meaning that whenever U European Union law is applied, it has to be applied uh, in the light of the, uh, the Charter, and the Charter is applicable. There cannot be situations yeah, where Union law is applied, some parts of secondary legislation, even some technical parts of, of secondary le uh, legislation without that uh, the uh, Charter uh, um, is to be applied in the same uh, uh, time. But it means also the other way, that uh, the Charter cannot be applied if Union law is not involved. Yeah? If the only, there always has to be a reference, basically coming from secondary legislation to Union law, uh, un the Charter cannot be applied as a standalone uh, basis. And we had many, in particular, shortly after the entry into force of the Charter, we had many requests for preliminary rulings. Yeah? where citizens asked the uh, national court first and then the national court asked, uh, why can uh, the, so to say, I feel that the citizens, I do not have enough rights of appeal against my tax, uh, <laughs> uh, the tax, what is it in English, uh, statement yeah, by, the, uh, by the authorities. I, do, I should have uh, further rights to appeal, I don't know in which areas. And very often we had say, sorry, yeah? in this case it's direct tax, it has nothing to do with European law. It's, uh, it's, we had a case from Bulgaria, I remember, where it was on the, um, on, um, uh, uh, on the planning for the landscape, which areas should be urban areas and which should be, uh, stay on to be agricultural areas. Yeah? And it ha there's no uh, link to the European Union law. There's simply no rules in this area in the, in the European legal uh, order. And where this is not given, there also, of course, the Charter does not apply. And in this case, the national uh, uh, fundamental uh, rights are applicable. And of course, also the Convention, if it's in the scope of the Convention, the Convention uh, uh, applies. <coughs> So who, who, is the, who can be a, a right holder under, under uh, the, the convention, that, uh, under the charter? That depends very much on, on, on the exact wording of the articles uh, of, of, the, uh, of the charter. We very often have the expression, every person or everyone. Then that means that as well moral and legal persons can, uh, can be uh, right holders independently of EU citizenship. That means that also uh, citizens of third countries, uh, uh, legal persons of third countries can be right holders under, the, under our uh, uh, charter. And, and uh, we extended this even to state-owned organizations uh, of uh, third countries. We had some clients uh, like banks uh, from the Iran 
and as you know, there was a, a, a regime of sanctions yeah, against um, against uh, the uh, Iranian uh, government and also uh, against some uh, 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 banks and and other uh, uh, um, enterprises close to the Iranian uh, government. Uh, and uh, in the European Union, we can uh, decide, we, not the, uh, not the court, but the council, yeah, can, uh, so to say, sanction them by uh, adopting so-called restrictive measures, meaning that they, that they can no longer benefit from doing some, for some business in Europe, or their accounts are frozen, or, or the sons, we had a case even, the son of one of these entrepreneurs was forbidden to do his studies in, in the UK. Yeah? But these persons can, can have also rights under the charter, it's the right to property, the right uh, of, of a fair uh, a fair uh, 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 trial and, and, and other rights. Okay, who is obliged to respect um, uh, the, the Charter? I mentioned already, of, of course, uh, the, the Union as such and, and all its bodies, institutions, and so on, and the member states and their authorities, when the when they, oh, I'm kind of typing it they apply union law. Uh, uh, we have uh, an ongoing discussion uh, on whether private persons um, may be uh, touched by the charter also in the sense that they are directly obliged by the uh, charter. And this effect, what we called uh, the horizontal uh, direct uh, uh, effect, is, is mainly with uh, 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 the articles um, on discrimination. So the, the, in particular, the, the article 21. And if there is time, I will come back to this case, this IR case, yeah, where we applied uh, or where we expressed that uh, the, 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 the um, uh, obligation not to discriminate against the person because of uh, it's of the, because of religion or belief yeah is to be respected directly also from an employer even if it's a private employer yeah. but not all provisions of course of the charter do have this effect so then of course like like also for the European uh, convention there um, uh, the, the rights are guaranteed by the Charter are not, uh, um, so to say, uh, without limitations. And uh, we have uh, in the Article 22 um, of the Charter um, very, I think, the rules which are also more or less apply also with the Convention and also for most of the national uh, 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 human rights, that all the limitations uh, which are uh, uh, which are introduced um, and which are touching um, uh, uh, individual human rights, they have to be provided for by law. Yeah? And uh, I was really surprised that already very early we had uh, several cases where this rather basic uh, requirement was not respected. Unfortunately, it wasn't even respected by our uh, general court and they introduced in a procedure before our general court a restriction to the right of defense which was not foreseen in the rules of procedure of the court so they we have uh, uh, we had to tell them that they have to respect article 42 of the uh, of the of the charter and then of course uh, that um, all the limitations introduced even if they are introduced by law uh, <coughs> have to respect the essence of the rights uh, and freedoms, and I have quoted here uh, one of uh, um, from our most important um, uh, judgments that uh, on uh, it was a it was a judgment on whether data detention is uh, of, is is uh, is uh, legal. And there was said that legislation permitting the public authorities to have access on a generalized basis to the content of electronic communication 
must be regarded as compromising the essence of the fundamental rights to respect for private life as guaranteed by Article 7 of the Charter. So to say if, if authorities uh, are given access to the content even and not only to the what we call metadata of, of communication, then the, the, the essence of, the, of Article 7, which is the one who protects uh, private life uh, in the Charter, is uh, uh, not respected. Okay, that's, a, that's more or less from, in the, yeah, that's from the same uh, judgment that also Article 47 of the Charter uh, is, is uh, not respected if there is no possibility for someone uh, whose data have been uh, collected to get uh, legal redress to ask for the uh, uh, rectification uh, of, of, the, of data and, and so on. This was in the context both uh, uh, citations were in the co in context of, of uh, a decision we, or a judgment we had to make on the legality of an agreement between the European Union and the US on data protection. And uh, this disagreement uh, was challenged by a young Austrian law student, this is this Mr. Schrems, who found via the uh, Irish um, courts, the way to the European Court uh, of, of Justice, and, and <laughs> Sorry. We, con uh, we confirmed uh, that, uh, well, we found that uh, this decision of, or this, 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 agree this was an agreement with the US authorities and a decision of the Commission that um, this uh, decision of the Commission did not respect the Charter and we uh, de declared this decision null and void and afterwards a new, new uh, negotiations were, were sought with the US and there is now a new agreement and, and a new decision which certainly will come up in due time uh, to our court again. Then all the limitations um, uh, have to respect the principle of proportionality. Uh, here, all, uh, more or less the same area, the, the, the case of Digital Rights Ireland, that the retention of all electronic communication data is not strictly necessary. This was in the context also of uh, uh, a directive of the European Union, which uh, pro uh, provided for a general collection of all metadata of all citizens, uh, and uh, we said this retention of all electronic communication data is not strictly necessary uh, for the purposes uh, of uh, fighting organized crime and terrorism and, and, and so on. And there have already been several acts of the European Union secondary legislation which has been uh, annulled because of violation of the Charter. I mentioned here two other cases Then, um, if, if such uh, restrictions, limitations are introduced uh, to, uh, and, and they, they, they constitute limitations to, uh, to a fundamental right, they also must meet objectives of general interest recognized by the Union. And in the meantime, we have all kinds of, of uh, uh, objectives recog recognized which can justify limitations uh, of, of charter rights. Of course, very frequently is now the fight against organized crime and terrorism, public, public security, then uh, sound administration of justice. It's always used when, it's, when there are limitations to the rights coming from Article 47 uh, of, of the charter, but also very specific uh, uh, objectives of the European Union, nam namely the fight against food and mouse disease, was already used to limit some fundamental or limit one fundamental right. And limitations might also be necessary for protecting the rights and freedom of others. We have several judgments in the meantime where the uh, where there was uh, to a balance to be found between the rights of one person and the rights of another uh, person, and one case was on the rights of an unmarried father. 
It was a case, I think, coming from the UK, and we said that the rights of an unmarried father might be limited because of the, the rights of the mother, in particular, if she uh, uh, doesn't want to give uh, the right of custody or want to share the right of custody with uh, an unmarried father, or there is another conflict between individual rights in was in this one uh, case in the sky, when we had to find that the right to conduct a business may be limited if this is necessary to ensure the fundamental freedom of citizens to receive information and the freedom and pluralism uh, of the, of the uh, media. Then, uh, what you don't really find in the, in the European, uh, uh, in the Strasbourg Convention, the European uh, Convention, uh, we have, um, the authors of the charter have given some uh, rules to all the tribunals and courts who have to apply the, uh, the charter. And we have several interpretation rules which have to be respected when, when uh, the charter is to be interpreted. Uh, one is that it, uh, the charter rights are to be interpreted in conformity with the treaties. This is necessary because we have sometimes more or less the same right in the treaties and, we have, uh, and also in, in the charter. Unfortunately, they are drafted sometimes in a different way. Yeah? Uh, for instance, um, the, the free movement of persons uh, is, is mentioned also in the Article 21 uh, of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. And in this Article 21, this right is limited. That is that the free movement of persons is under the limits and conditions given by Union secondary law. But in the Charter, Article uh, uh, 45, it's not limited. It sounds like that there are no limits to the free movement of persons in the European Union. Yeah? And with the help of this rule, that uh, charter rights are to be interpreted in the light of the treaties. One has to uh, transpose the limits given in the treaties also to the, char to the charter rights. Then what's very important and uh, also more or less uh, uh, in, in every judgment that deals with uh, fundamental rights, uh, this principle is applied, that we have um, the principle of conform interpretation with the European uh, convention on, on uh, human rights. Um, the, the Article 22 says explit, explicitly that for charter rights, which correspond to rights of the convention, the meaning and the scope shall be the same as those laid down by the convention. And actually, uh, some of the charter rights are the same as the one in the convention. There is even a table uh, has been uh, established uh, that says uh, which rights are more or less the same uh, as the one uh, uh, of the convention, but we have also rights in the charter which are not in the convention and go on and address other, uh, other issues. And of course, there are no, uh, so to say, no obligation to refer to the convention because there's nothing in the convention on this kind of, uh, of rights. But that's very, very important that the Union law may provide more extensive protection. That means that uh, the European Convention on Human Rights establishes some kind of minimum standard yeah, uh, for the uh, charter rights, but uh, the European Union law can establish higher uh, rights, which uh, I think should be, uh, it has been criticized a lot, this, this, uh, this provision, but I think it's, it should be normal, yeah, because uh, the, there are uh, many, many signatories to the European uh, Convention on Human Rights with a very, um, how can I say, put it politely, yeah, very, with a very different standard on, on, on uh, uh, human rights. There is Turkey, there is uh, Russia, yeah? uh, and if you look, have a look at the uh, judgments of the uh, Strasbourg Sister Court, yeah, then you always have more or less the same, the same um, um, uh, uh, signatories um, to the convention. 
and I think it's it's really justified to, to allow for the member states of the Euro European Union or to oblige the European Union as such and uh, the member states of the European Union that uh, they uh, can also apply higher uh, uh, st uh, standards. Okay. One uh, other rule for the interpretation of the Charter is the one that the interpretation has to be in conformity with the constitutional tradition common to the member states. Uh, this rule has not been applied very often so far. I, th I found one, on, uh, one case, and this case, in this case, this rule was not very helpful. This case, DEB, was on whether legal aid has to be given also to uh, legal persons or only to uh, moral persons. And, and uh, like it was the case, in, it was a German case, because in ca German law for so legal aid only for moral persons and not for legal uh, persons. And then we started to uh, study the, the traditions of uh, our member states and found out more or less half of them recognize legal aid also to legal persons, the other half does not. And also those who uh, recognize legal aid to legal persons have totally com uh, different systems to do it, sometimes very restrictive, sometimes more generous. So uh, this rule did not really help us yeah, to find uh, an interpretation uh, of Article 47, which foresees that everyone has the right to legal uh, legal aid, and we finally decided, basically, in favor of uh, legal aid, also for uh, legal uh, legal persons. Then we have in the charter some provisions which do not really give individual rights, but give a more general principles principles which should be respected by the uh, European Union legislator as well as by the, me by the member states. But uh, you really, these kind of principles, you can, one can see it uh, by, the, by, the, uh, by the wording of that they always say that um, to the extent secondary legislation gives a certain right. This means this right is, exists only if there is secondary legislation, either by the European Union or by the member states, which which give certain which give certain rights, and we uh, we we had to to um, uh, limit, for instance, this Article 27 of the charges uh, of the of the Charter uh, to the um, that there is only the effect of a principle, but there are not individual rights, and this article is on the right of workers to be informed and consulted and how this uh, information of workers in an enterprise and the consultants or the, um, this process of uh, consultation should look like you need secondary legislation and this right is not so to say one directly from the uh, from the uh, that uh, comes directly from the charter then uh, um, there are so-called explanations to the, to the charter that were drafted by the members um, of the board of the first convention and then changed or amended by, by, the, by the next convention, the one on, on the constitution of Europe. This, uh, yeah, this some kind of commentaries yeah, and uh, uh, it said in the charter that these explanations should be given due regard. Sometimes these explanations are helpful, sometimes they say what what, so to say, they, what is self-understood? Yeah. Uh, sometimes, uh, in difficult questions, that they, are, they don't help at all. <laughs> okay. Then there is one um, general uh, provision also at the end of the charter, um, which has already caused some some uh, problems and also some judgments, and it's more or less. Um, an article that refers uh, to the relationship to national constitutions and to other institutions uh, and international and to international um, agreements and um, basically this article says that nothing in this charter shall be interpreted as restricting or adversely affecting human rights uh, 
recognized by international agreements and by the uh, mem member states. And we had already some judgments to do where member states said, uh, or their courts said, that um, they want to apply a higher national uh, standard and uh, if they are free to do so, more or less, or if uh, there is a problem with the Charter of the European uh, Union law. And um, that was our answer. Uh, it was in the Maloney uh, case. It was a case on a, on the, on a European arrest uh, warrant. And there we said uh, where an EU legal act calls for national implementing measures, national authorities and courts remain free to apply national standards of protection of fundamental rights provided that the level of protection provided for by the Charter as interpreted by the court and the primacy, unity and effectiveness of European law are not thereby compromised. No? In this, this rule applies mainly in those areas where secondary le legislation really harmonizes the national law and we would like to avoid yeah, that the one found harmonization by this act of secondary legislation that with the reference to really or allegedly higher national constitutional standards uh, is undermined yeah, and said we uh, continue to apply uh, a system which is different from what said in, uh, in this case of the European arrest warrant in, in a framework uh, decision. So that was my, my, my general part. So I, I'm now open for questions. And if, if there's still time, I didn't really watch <laughs> the clock, uh, then I could present uh, one, one specific case, meaning the one on the discrimination at the workplace case on grounds of religion. But I, I would uh, prefer to use the time uh, for, for a debate. If so, we should. So what, <coughs> what, what would you prefer to have more time for discussion or to uh, discuss the case? Okay. I should not have moved this one. Okay. So it was the case? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I probably need some help to f come back to my other presentations. On the, on the first screen, there was. Uh, it was uh, discrimination at workplace, this one. Okay. How much time there's still left? So we we could have uh, something like twenty minutes, or uh, when, when when do your lecture start, or well, you are available for next thirty minutes? Okay, good. <laughs> thirty minutes. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't I need for thirty minutes. Yeah. Okay. In this presentation, I have uh, uh, sort of say included um, also. What said in, the, in, in rights in the acts of secondary legislation, but in the context uh, now uh, of, of speci specific importance is Article 21, the second part uh, of this slide. Yeah? Article 21, paragraph 1 of the, the, the Charter, and it says that uh, any discrimination based on any ground such as sex, race, color, ethnic or social origin, genetic features, language, religion or belief political or any other opinion, membership of a national minority, property, birth, disability, age, or sexual orientation shall be prohibited. Yeah? Uh, it's uh, very long, very explicit. Yeah? Uh, it's, it's not exhaustive. It's uh, discrimination based on any ground such as. That means there might be other reasons come up uh, which, uh, which are used for, 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 for discrimination. But it's already very, <laughs> very extensive, so it's, it's not very likely that uh, uh, in the near future other reasons can come up. And it's even the, um, in the academic world, there are a lot of discussion going on. What, what for instance, uh, does it mean uh, to be discriminated against uh, uh, because of um, property? Yeah? Has this something to do with... Uh, if taxes are too high 
or if there is to uh, sort of say a higher tax on a larger amount of property than in a lower a tax of a lower uh, property is this already discrimination um, okay <laughs> you have flat rates okay <laughs> And then we also have in, 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 article, in paragraph two of article 21 um, that, uh, that discrimination on grounds of nationality uh, shall be prohibited. That means in the context of the European Union that uh, citizens of other union member states yeah, uh, are to be treated equally with uh, the, the citizens um, uh, of, of, of a member states and there should not, shouldn't be any um, any any uh, different uh, treatment, but there is a restriction in this uh, article, as you can see, within the scope of application of the treaties and without prejudice to any of their specific provisions. And I already mentioned before the right of free movement, meaning the right of uh, each EU citizens to move uh, to another member state uh, to take residence there. Yeah? is not without limits, yeah? in particular when it comes to access to social uh, um, um, benefits. Yeah? You have to be there at least six months and you have to seek work at least and have some chances to find work or you have an, uh, an health insurance sufficiently for you and your family or you have your own enough own money. So the, this right of free movement, which is also guaranteed under the principle of non-discrimination, is not without limits. Yeah? And in this case, we have the limits also in the charter, in charter rights, and not only, only in the treaties. It's not very coherent in the, in the text. Then we have a, 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 a directive, which uh, is more or less applicable in all the cases we had now on discrimination at the workplace. But I don't present it, uh, this directive. Here we will uh, come back to this directive uh, in the context of the concrete case. Okay. Then I will repeat what I've already said in, in the earlier part that um, the uh, uh, provisions in the in the in the treaties and also those in the in the charter, which uh, address uh, discrimination that these uh, uh, provisions have direct horizontal effect. That means that they are applicable also bet between private parties, an employer and an employee, uh, in other private uh, consumer and a merchant. Yeah? So the, the, this is the exception of the rule that normally uh, the, this uh, direct effect or the obligation under, under a EU law provision is, is only with um, the state and state authority and state authorities, and normally this <coughs> uh, this uh, this direct horizontal effect is only with uh, charter rights or some of the charter rights and some treaty provisions. This direct horizontal effect is not with uh, directives, even not with this one directive yeah, uh, on on non discrimination at the, at uh, the the work the workplace. And normally the, the first step uh, is always if you, if the judges are in, 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 in uh, so to say, asked to, to, to judge on a discrimination case, that um, they have to interpret the directive in the light of, of, uh, the, of the charter. In any case, also in these uh, cases between pri private persons. But if it's only a direct, um, if it's only a directive, they cannot apply the rule of the directive directly to the case. They can do so only if the provision of the charter or of a treaty, meaning a provision of the primary law, is, uh, is applicable. And now I come to this uh, case, which is really astonishing case. I wouldn't have thought that this is still, this has still has been possible in Germany. Um, at the, as to the facts of the case, the case is, is called after IR, and this IR is a company established under German law and is owned by the, the Caritas, which is a Catholic chari charitable organization. And this um, 
IR and the carriers, they are running uh, inter alia hospitals. In our case, it was a hospital in, under the jurisdiction and the supervision of the Archbishop of Cologne. And um, we anonymized all the names, that's very difficult. Chiku is a, was a doctor at this hospital. He was of Roman Catholic faith and he worked as a head of the internal medicine department of, of this, um, of this um, hospital. He was, as he should have been, according to the Roman Catholic uh, religion, he was, he was married. Then his first wife separated from him and he married again. She, he had a girlfriend afterwards and he married this girlfriend in a civil ceremony and he couldn't get annihilated his, his first marriage. And then he was all of a sudden dismissed by the hospital and his uh, employer, not because he was, sep uh, he was separated, not because he had a girlfriend, but because he married uh, the girlfriend in a civil procedure. And this, in the eyes of the Catholic Church, was the real wrongdoing. Yeah? Not the divorce, not uh, anything else, but, <laughs> but the re remarriage was the, uh, was the problem. And uh, this doctor brought his case uh, before an, a, a German labor court. And he claimed that, that, uh, that uh, his dismissal was an infringement of the principle of equal treatment and the remarriage does not uh, constitute a ground for dismissal for colleagues of Protestant or no faith. Because these Catholic German hospitals, they fill their posts as long as possible with Catholics. And if they don't find Catholic doctors, they take a Protestant. And if they don't take Protestant, they take those without any faith. And uh, yeah, I don't know where other religions are coming in this hierarchy. Yeah, um, of course, Christian religions before other ones, and, and so on. Yeah, and uh, this rule applied at the time. This case uh, was was uh, it was 20, 29, Yeah, uh, the, the Catholic Church in, in Germany changed in the meantime. Yeah, but at that time. This rule was applied not only to the posts of doctors, it was also applied for uh, technical posts, for the, I don't know, the engineers or the one who is for the housekeeping in a hospi hospital. Uh, the company said, uh, uh, Caritas said, the Catholic Church said, that uh, this dismissal was socially justified by entering into a marriage that is unwill unvalid under canon law. Um, this doctor had clearly infringed his obligation under his employment contract. And um, all the German labor courts and, uh, and also the highest German labor court, it's the Bundesarbeitsgericht, yeah, decided in favor of the doctor and said it's clear case of discrimination. Yeah. But uh, somehow this um, uh, organization IR, or the, the Caritas, uh, could organize it that the case came before the Constitutional Court uh, in, in Germany and who asked the Bundesarbeitsgericht, the specialized Supreme Court on labor law in Germany, to reconsider uh, the, the position. And uh, this, um, the, the, to say there, it's already for a longer time, there was always a dispute between the Constitutional Court and the Bund, the, the, this highest labor court, yeah, because the constitutional court always held that for historical reasons that uh, found entrance into the German Grundgesetz, the German uh, um, uh, constitution, there should be the largest autonomy possible for the churches in, 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 in Germany, and the churches only uh, determine what's uh, in for which professions, yeah, it is necessary that uh, you are of the same religion as the, the employer and what rules you have to respect yeah, uh, as, as an employee by this uh, kind of, um, of uh, organizations. Sorry? Ah, yeah, and the IQ, yeah. Said the freedom of uh, 
uh, the, the right to be treated equally. Yeah, it was really it's really a constitutional uh, conflict because, because two constitutional rights are. Uh, the 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 the, lab, the highest labor law court ruled in favor of uh, uh, the right not to be discriminated against, and the constitutional court was always more on the side of the churches, yeah? uh, and ruled that it's only up to the churches to determine what requirements they set up, yeah? and it's not for the yeah, that was so to say <laughs> it was what the Bund Bundesarbeitsgericht. Uh, uh, had uh, difficulties to accept. It's not for the labor law courts to control the churches, whether they so-called uh, somehow abused yeah, their autonomy, their rights under the under the autonomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more or less all. Yeah, in the and and it's up to no one to control whether it's it uh, it rightly considered as being a case in within the autonomy. Yeah. That was the essential, finally, of, of, of this case. Okay, and and um, uh, it was it was uh, uh, clear from the outset that that uh, the case has to be considered under this uh, one uh, directive, 2078, uh, and uh, how this directive is to be understood. In particular, it's Article 4.2 which contains a reference to the specific situation of, of churches yeah? and what uh, this um, exception in the, in the directive really means uh, was, um, was a question referred to us uh, by the uh, uh, German highest labor law uh, court. And um, there is this uh, f a, a question which uh, is... Uh, is uh, uh, Sible is pointing yeah, to this to this question of autonomy uh, that the Catholic Church can decide with binding effect, yeah, meaning that no one else can uh, put in question this uh, this decision of the Catholic Church that its organizations are to, to differentiate between employees who belong to the same church and those who belong to another phase or none at all. And we have a provision here, for this paragraph 9, uh, of the Allgemeine Gleichbehandlungsgesetz, that's the German uh, National Act, which transposes the, the, the EU directive. Yeah? And um, in this provision of the, the German law, this wide autonomy uh, interpretation of the constitutional court yeah, uh, is is uh, uh, adopted, and therefore the labor court asks us that whether in case that we find that uh, the churches do not have uh, the, this uh, binding this right to d decide with binding effect. Yeah, that and, but the national law pro, uh, provides that they have this, uh, this right, no? then if a provision of the national law is not in conformity with the union law, the national judge has to disapply the national provision. And that's, uh, that's um, the, the background of the question. Okay. Then we, we try to, 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 uh, to solve the question mainly on the, the basis of the, of the uh, directive, but more or less everything has also to do with the interpretation of Article 20, uh, uh, 21. And um, we um, sort of say uh, found first it's not only the question of d discrimination and the the applicability of the Article 21 of the Charter, which is at stake, it's also for Article 47 of the Charter, which is at stake, meaning the right uh, of access to a fair trial and the right to an impartial, in independent, independent court, no? because of this uh, uh, jurisprudence of the Constitutional Court, no? which more or less denies yeah, uh, the access to a court in in this kind of uh, this kind of. Uh, conflicts, and then there is a, a reference also in the judgment to Article 17 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, and uh, this is about a general 
uh, uh, rule that uh, the union respects uh, 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 all the, the, the system which are existing in the member states uh, as regards the relationship between state and churches. Yeah? And actually we have in the union all kinds of systems. Yeah? We have state churches, yeah, where more or less uh, one church is the official church of a, of a member state. Yeah? We have uh, states, member states like France, yeah? where there is a, a constitutional principle of very strict yeah, separation from state and, and religion. Yeah? So we have all kind of systems in the European Union. So what should, uh, in my opinion, it wasn't even necessary that we say something in the treaty <laughs> on, the, on this relationship. Yeah? Uh, but what, what it's said now is very general, and it's only that the European Union uh, accepts yeah, whatever the member states foresee for their relationship to, 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 the, to the churches uh, and does not want to, to, uh, to, to change it. Yeah. But this uh, Article 17 is not an exemption yeah, from, from Article 21, meaning that churches are free to discriminate. Yeah. That was never the idea of this, uh, this article. And then um, there is uh, one, one requirement from, from, uh, from the directive, which is the one who uh, has to be examined by in these kind of cases, that, um, that uh, so to say churches can require the membership in their religion, of uh, certain religion or belief, but uh, this must constitute a genuine, legitimate, justified, and proportionate re requirement. That means that uh, churches may treat uh, employees differently uh, as regards the requirement to act in good faith and loyalty only if bearing in mind the nature and the context of the re religion or belief is a genuine, legitimate, and justified uh, requirement. All, if this is not the case, it's a, a case of uh, discrimination, and it's finally for the national court to decide whether these requirements are met. That's, uh, but our court gave uh, some kind of guidance uh, to the uh, German Bundesarbeitsgericht. So we didn't, as in most of the cases, we don't decide finally the cases. We only say the, the national courts, how they sh should proceed and which kinds of considerations they have to take into account uh, uh, when, when they are uh, deciding on, on, the, on the national uh, judgment. And uh, here's some examples what we said uh, in, this, uh, in this case, that the sacred and indissoluble nature of religious marriage does not appear to be genuine. Some positions may be held on, on also by non-Catholic persons. So in the, as I described before, no? if it's, if it's a, a job description, we are okay. If you find a Catholic, you take a Catholic, but if you, find, if you don't find a Catholic, you take a Protestant or a Muslim or someone of no faith, you can't say this, that this really, the, the, the violating this uh, 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 religious view of what means a, relig a religious marriage is a genuine yeah, a requirement for the job. If, if the same job can be done by someone who is not bound yeah, by this, uh, by this uh, rule. Uh, and we said also it does not appear to be justified, but uh, it, the uh, employer in this case, I m might establish that there is a probable and substantial risk of undermining its ethos or its right to autonomy, what's probably not really possible. And here is this, this one um, um, point in our um, judgment, which is saying that more or less that uh, this uh, um, effect, um, uh, what the interpretation uh, given to the directive is also the interpretation that is to be given to Article 21 of the Charter. And because Article 21 of the Charter has direct effect, yeah, Article 21 of the Charter is also to be applied in this case because it's, a, it's an employer and an employee, meaning be between private uh, persons. And, and uh, it's sort of say, uh, uh, it means in the in the this case it means that uh, the 
Charta, and it, it's Article 21, yeah, has the effect that this one, Article 9 of the national law, yeah, has to be disapplied by, by the national judge. This one provision in national law which allows the mem uh, in the member state that churches have these wide uh, competences yeah, and that they are even allowed to discriminate without any judicial control, that this one provision of the national law uh, 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 is to be disapplied uh, even in a case like this where they are private and uh, uh, employer. Okay, that's more or less all on this area. And we had a similar case, I don't want to discriminate against the Catholic Church, we had a more or less similar case with the Protestant uh, Church. Yeah? So it's, 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 uh, they have this, they had the same rules, they are more, more open, open now. Okay, that's this case, thank you. So, are there questions? Okay. Um, so I have a question regarding uh, the recent judgment of the uh, European Court of Justice uh, about uh, the right uh, of freedom of movement and establishment. Uh, as the court interpreted this right, uh, uh, it was the case of, uh, of Romanian citizen who yeah. got married in the uh, United States and uh, wanted to uh, get uh, the right of residence to, for his partner in Romania. Ah, okay, the Coleman case, yeah? Yes, yeah. so uh, I think that this judgment is very close um, uh, to the line which undermines the mm, national law, of, uh, for example, in this case, Romania. Uh, as you mentioned, there's a principle that uh, uh, this, uh, the charter and the, uh, cha the right of the charter are, uh, have subsidiary principles and only apply when uh, the law of European Union applies, right? So uh, what is your opinion uh, regarding uh, this, uh, this recent decision and what could be the uh, trend uh, uh, and under yeah. which the more and more people would... Yeah. Uh, to my understanding, uh, the court said that Romania should recognize this partnership, right? Which yeah. under its national law is not recognized. So. I'd like yeah, to know yeah. your opinion. Um, uh, this, uh, this, this common case uh, concerned uh, a Romanian citizen who was working in Brussels and he got married uh, according to Belgian law, uh, which uh, knows uh, same-sex marriage. He got uh, married to, uh, to a US citizens, citizen. And just to explain the case to those who are not so <laughs> familiar, familiar with it, and, and they, they uh, the, 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 the Romanian guy, Mr. Coman, he, uh, he asked uh, before moving to Romania, he asked the Roman, uh, Roman authorities, the Romanian authorities, whether he would be allowed to take his uh, husband with, with him to Romania. And they said no, because there is no uh, same-sex marriage uh, in, 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 in Romania. Uh, the problem is uh, that um, the problem is, it depends on where one stands. Yeah? But, but there is a di directive, which also in the context of free movement of workers yeah? uh, and free movement of persons foresees that uh, you are not only allowed to go to another member state to look there for work, but you also have to be admitted back home without any differences. And, uh, it, uh, and you have the right to family life uh, meaning that uh, you, uh, once you are established in another EU member states, you have the right that the, uh, close, your closer family uh, has the right to follow. And or even if you find a new family yeah, in your new member state where you are working, yeah, that might be an EU citizen, yeah, that might be a third country citizen, you have to live with your partner, your family member in the new member states. but in order to really to, to not to hinder someone to make uh, use of these rights, you have the same rights also when you return back home. So that uh, if you have married someone uh, who is an EU citizen, then it's normally not a problem. But also if you have someone who is a uh, third country citizen, you have to take him with you home if it's your family member. So it was all up 
to the question who, what, what's a family member. And, and as the directive is very open in its wording, it, and it's don't, don't, doesn't sp the directive doesn't speak of husband and wife, yeah? they speak of partner, uh, in French I think, partner, yeah? I don't know the exact term in English, yeah? but a very open term, and, and we found that, uh, okay, they were, they were considered as, as a family in, in Belgium, they have to be, uh, to, in order to, um, uh, guarantee this right to also to return back home without any disadvantages that must also go in, the, in this case. But we made it very clear in the judgment that this does not mean that Romania is obliged to introduce same-sex marriage under its national law. Yeah? They have to accept more or less as an exception these kind of cases. Yeah? But if Rom Romania still remains free to say either on secondary law level or what they intended yeah, to do even on constitutional law level to say no same-sex marriage in Romania. That's not for the European Union to decide. It's only in these transnational cases that in this sort of say the, the directive uh, is to be applied. Uh. Uh, hello, so hello. I wanted to ask you about specifically discrimination at workplace, specifically revolving the country United States and the case which was resolved a couple of months ago, the Masterpiece Cake Shop case. Yeah. The Masterpiece Cake Shop case, in which uh, a Christian baker refused to uh, bake a wedding cake for a same-sex couple, and uh, he was justified under... Yeah. Uh, uh, with the masterpiece case? I, I read in the newspapers, I, meaning that I read of this case in the newspapers, I don't have any specific legal information on it. Yeah, I yeah. Read yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, I was just wondering the how the European Court of Justice, answer. I was just wondering how the European Court of Justice would resolve this case, mm -hmm. would resolve this case, specifically revolving around the discrimination at a workplace which is owned by a private business owner. For example, if a same-sex couple walked up to a business owner and asked them to perform something for them and the business owner refused, how would the European Court of Justice resolve this case? Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was general on, on access to, to services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we, in the European Union law, there is one directive which treats also access to services and non-discrimination, um, uh, access to services. But I'm not so sure, I know that uh, it's, if you, for instance, the situation that someone is looking for a, an apartment, yeah, or someone want, wants to, ex, uh, to enter um, a discotheque, <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> and there were cases like this, yeah. And they are denied access, yeah? or the uh, the owner of an apartment says from the outset, yeah, I I, I don't take uh, uh, black people, yeah, f f in my apartment, yeah. Then this is not allowed by a directive. I'm I'm now not so sure whether uh, same-sex marriages and discrimination uh, of the people concerned to certain services if they, they would fall under the scope of this specific directive on so to say equal access to, to, to services yeah because until now we we had never had to apply uh, as far as I know this one directive we all, only have cases more or less on this uh, on this workplace uh, directive which is broader yeah there are more more grounds yeah? uh, prohibited the one on discrimination in the context of access to services is narrower, yeah? and I know that there shouldn't be any discrimination on the grounds of race, but I'm not sure now whether there should be dis um, discrimin whether it covers also discrimination on the ground of, of sexual orientation. Yeah? But one can look it up, or well, you know, prof probably know, Professor. Yeah, okay, okay.
Well, I have one question regarding the discrimination on the workplace and uh, uh, generally in, in the European Union, in the United States as well, there is a large discussion on uh, regarding the uh, pay gap uh, mm -hmm. on the high level of managerial position. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is a case uh, in your court at the moment uh, where uh, CEO, one of the company, I don't remember the details of the case, mm -hmm. is uh, kind of uh, claiming that she has been discriminated uh, on the basis of gender, mm -hmm. as she has been not paid uh, the same amount as the uh, male CEO of the company mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. has been paid. I, I'm very sorry that I do not remember the uh, yeah, initials yeah. and the uh, details of the case, but I would then uh, put the question uh, in a different way. So are there any cases at the mm -hmm. court at the moment where this equal uh, payment yeah. uh, gap is uh, discussed uh, and whether there are some uh, um, interesting I developments? I really, really remember a case and, and also I'd, uh, I'd, uh, I've not heard anything that this case would be a dark court, but I don't look at the register of our court every day, so I, I can't exclude it. But I, my explanation would be if it's really, so to say, uh, a, a case where there is uh, the, a violation of the principle of equal treatment, the case probably wouldn't come up to us because it's so clear for the national court. Yeah? They have this principle in all the, the national constitutions. Yeah? They have it uh, in, in, as part of the primary law. Yeah? I don't think that uh, if, from, in, so to say, this principle requires an interpretation by the union law, uh, that the problem in this kind of cases will always be are the, f the facts, yeah? and is it really the same work, is it really the same job, and, 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 and so on. Nah? And these kind of questions are not for our court, it's always for the national courts to, to, to clarify. So. I would appreciate if this kind of cases would come to us, but but it's 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 more or less unlikely that they are coming. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you very much okay. for coming and uh, for an interesting lecture. Ta Didi Madluba, Quince, Quince, Quince,